How to Master Anything Fast Mastery is not a question of genetics or luck, but of following your natural inclinations and deep desires that stir you from within. Robert Greene famously quoted this line, Do you want to be successful? Or do you have a skill that you've always been itching to learn, but don't want to spend hours upon hours of excruciating pain, sweat, and blood trying to master that skill? The 10,000-Hour Rule by Malcolm Gladwell states that a person principally needs 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to become world-class in any field. I'm not sure about you, but my hours are finite, and I can't spend 10,000 excruciating hours learning a new skill. I just don't have that kind of time. Unless you do. But if you don't, here are a few hacks to help you master anything fast. Hopefully. Tip number one. Learn in flow. The best way to learn something is when we reach a state of flow. A state of flow in positive psychology, also known as the zone, is the mental state of operation in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized, focused, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. It's like when you're playing a video game you really like and all your attention and focus is on the game. Nothing else matters to you except what's happening in the game. In that moment, your house could be on fire or the kitchen flooding. But none of that matters. Your sole focus is on the game. In essence, flow is the complete absorption in what one does. You can also achieve a state of flow while watching a sports game. Have you ever found yourself screaming and yelling at the TV while watching a sports game? Imagine this. Your favorite football team is playing on Sunday against their local rivals. You guys hate each other's guts. Your rivalry goes way back. Last year, they beat you guys. But this year, haha, <laughs> this year, you guys vow to get revenge. You're not only going to defeat them, but you guys are going to absolutely humiliate and destroy them. Your enemies, after all. So the game comes on, and you've been watching it for some time. You're enjoying the intensity and action, and you're fully immersed in the game. It's like you're actually there. The phone rings, but you don't notice. Someone is at the door knocking, but you don't hear it. Your kid is trying to have a conversation with you, but you're not listening. You're watching the game. What did you say, honey? In such a scenario, you would be in a state of flow. You're completely engaged and absorbed in the game. Nothing else matters to you except the game. The rest of the world will just have to wait until halftime. Then you're at it again. Tip number two, just start. Richard Branson, a personal role model of mine, has this famous quote, screw it, let's do it, just for the sake of it. You never know, you might be successful. Most of us, when we're learning a new skill, we tend to focus more on learning the theory and less on applying it. This is unfortunately a bad habit we picked up from school, and because of it, we always think of ideas and incredible things to do, and less on applying them. We should use the rule of two-thirds, which means spending only one-third of your time studying and the other two applying and practicing. Let me tell you a short story. So, a while back, me and my high school friend Zach decided to catch up in a local bar. I hadn't seen Zach for a few months. You see, we both work and live in different cities, so it's kind of hard for us to meet but we make it a priority to see each other a couple times each year. So, on this particular occasion, Zach told me the most interesting story ever. He said, So, one day on a Friday, as he was heading home after a busy work week, he and a couple of his male colleagues decided to pass by a bar, to have a couple drinks and just relax and have a good conversation. So, Zach told me that as he and his co-workers were talking, they noticed this young, attractive young lady hanging out with her girlfriends. She looked really attractive, according to Zach. He described her as an early mid-twenties brunette with the most dazzling eyes and with the most beautiful, gorgeous smile he'd ever seen on a girl. He definitely wanted to approach her, but there was just one problem. Before I continue with the story, I first have to tell you something about Zach. You see, Zach's not exactly the quintessential ladies' man. He's not the luckiest or the smoothest person when it comes to approaching women. He's often shy and comes off really awkward and unconfident. Back in high school, I remember he would often find it really difficult to approach girls he found really attractive. He would often struggle trying to find the right words to say and to keep the conversation going. Okay, back to the story. As he was telling me this story, I couldn't help but laugh the entire time. So I asked him, where did you get the confidence to approach the girl? And he responded, it must have been the alcohol. Huh, <laughs> I laughed. So, Zach told me that he had actually been watching a couple videos online on how to approach women and he even went as far as buying a course. The only problem was, he had never actually practiced any of the teachings he had learned from the course and videos. So I guess this was the perfect time to test his newfound skills. As Zach was talking to his friends, he noticed the young lady walking towards the bar counter. 
This is the perfect opportunity to approach her, he said. So he took a last sip of his drink, and with the help of some liquid courage, he started making his way towards the bar counter. He said hello and talked to her for a little while. He apparently even made her laugh. Finally, he wrapped up the conversation and exchanged numbers. He was over the moon and was so excited. To cut a long story short, Zack and the girl ended up meeting a few more times after that day and even started dating for a little while. Unfortunately, the relationship didn't last long, due to personal issues, I guess. But nonetheless, Zack had no regrets and he was really glad he took initiative. I was really happy for my friend Zack and I can't wait to hear the next crazy story. Hopefully next time you won't need the alcohol. You need to repeatedly keep testing yourself and abilities. You see, our brains evolved to learn by doing things, not by hearing about them. This is one of the reasons that for a lot of skills, it's much better to spend about two-thirds of your time testing yourself and applying it, rather than absorbing it. Take for example Taekwondo, or any other martial art. Could you imagine learning how to defend yourself in combat simply by reading a book or listening to a lecture and never actually throwing a punch? This is also true for school. If you're memorizing a passage, it's better to spend 30% of your time reading it and the other 70% of your time testing yourself on that knowledge. And if you do this, you should see a tremendous improvement in your work. Tip number four, the sweet spot. When we're learning, we want to be challenging ourselves 60 to 80% of the time. This is known as the sweet spot. Any more and it becomes too difficult and we quit. Any less and it becomes too easy and we also quit. So, it's imperative to always be upping the challenge and to avoid anything trivial and easy that will make us quit. Let me tell you a quick story. Back when I was in high school, I got really fascinated with coding and programming. I wanted so badly to learn how to code and build my own website. After doing a bit of research, I came across this awesome website called thenewboston.com, run by an awesome guy called Bucky Roberts. Shout out to Bucky. <laughs> anyway, I so badly wanted to code, and I have to admit the initial stages of learning HTML and CSS were tedious, but after every tutorial, I would learn something new and apply it to my simple website. It was hard, but I really enjoyed the challenge, and watching my website slowly come to life was definitely worth it. Eventually, after some time, I was able to code decent looking websites, which I have to admit, coming from a point of knowing nothing about code, to in a few weeks being able to build a decent looking website, felt really good. I mean, it got my mom's approval. The entire time I was learning how to code and program, I was in the sweet spot without even realizing it. Tip number five, commitment. Commit to the long haul. Rome wasn't built in a day, as the timeless cliche goes. And it's the same with a skill. You have to commit and put in the time. The difference between an average NBA player and a great NBA player is commitment. You need to continuously sharpen and prune your skill. The people who combine commitment with practice will always see their skills go off the charts because they're continuously applying and mastering their skills, and eventually they would have gotten to a point where they really are good at their skill, to a state of mastery. And finally, tip number six, find a mentor. The best way to learn is through mentorship. We were built for this. Watching someone achieve a certain goal or goals can be powerfully inspiring and motivating. That's how I started this channel. I saw someone else achieve success and I was like, why can't I? Of course, my first few channels didn't do so well, but eventually I found success here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's chat in the comments below. What other tips do you have? I'd love to hear them. Share this video with a friend or two too. It always helps with the views. But anyway, take care and I'll see you all in the next one.